In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a script to help simplify your Home Assistant text-based notifications. And we're going to discuss notify groups. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs. My name is Jeff. I've spent a lot of my recent videos talking about voice or text-to-speech notifications, but there are times when a text-based one comes in handy. With Home Assistant, you have lots of options in this area. Things like messaging apps, chat apps, public apps, private apps. But for me, the best option has been notifications via the Home Assistant companion app. And even with that, you have lots of options as well. Back in the 2021.5 release of Home Assistant, the team made it easier to send actionable notifications via the companion apps. And they brought parity between the Android and the iOS mobile app in terms of notifications. And while actionable notifications are useful, I'm not going to dive into them in this video. I will leave a link to the Home Assistant post on the actionable notifications in the description in case you want to check it out. Instead, I want to focus this video on building a simple reusable framework that leverages the mobile app notifications so you can spend more time on your automations. But before we get into that, let's do a quick recap of how we enable the mobile app notifications. This might be the easiest part of this video, because in order to enable the mobile app notifications, you need three things. The first thing, of course, is to install the mobile app. Once that's installed, you'll want to connect it to your Home Assistant instance. And then the last thing you need to do is make sure that you enable notifications inside the companion app. Once you've done all of that and successfully logged in to your Home Assistant instance using the mobile app, you should be able to head over to the Developer Tools and Services. And in the dropdown, you should be able to search for notify dot. And in the results, you should see some that say mobile app in the name. If you don't see those services listed here yet, I would jump over to the integrations panel and make sure that you see your devices listed under the mobile app integration. If you don't see that integration here, or you don't see your device, there could be a problem with your device connecting to your instance through the mobile app. But if you do see those notify services in your list of services, then you're ready to start sending notifications to those mobile apps. The basic service call for these notifications will look like this. Service will be the notify service for the specific device you want to send a notification to. Under data, we define our message. And you can, of course, get fancier and include things like title that will show on your notification screen, along with URLs and even images. But what if you have multiple devices you want to send the same notification to? That's where notify groups come in handy. Notify groups allow you to create a group of notify services and assign an alias to that group. Then you can use that alias to send a single notification to all of those notify services at one time. And while I'm primarily using the mobile app for my notifications, you could use other notification services in these groups. I would just make sure that every notify service you put in one of these groups has the same capabilities. Otherwise, you might run into errors when you try to push a notification to it. Here, you can see I have a group for all of the iOS. This group is used anytime I need to send a message to every device. Typically, this is only used for alerts regarding safety or security. Then I have one for parents. This is for any notification that I don't need to bother the kid about. And I have groups for each person. These groups contain all of the devices that currently have an app on it, although I haven't updated them in a while, so this is a total lie. But in theory, they would be all of the devices used by a specific person. That way, if I need to send a notification to myself, I get it both on my phone and my tablet. And an important safety tip, when defining these groups, don't use the entire notify service. For example, notify.mobile underscore app underscore Jeffrey underscore HA underscore app is the full service name, but here we just want the part after the notify dot. Each of these creates a new service. So for this first one, it just takes the name, and when you reload the notify services using the rest entries and notify services under server controls, you get a new notify.all underscore iOS service. These groups, of course, are not necessary, but they do make the next part easier. Of course, you could skip all of this script stuff now that you have your notify groups and do everything in your automations. 
Every time you send a notification to the all iOS group, you could do something like this. Use the group as the service, then data. Under that, you indent to define title and message if you want. Add another data section, and then more indenting if you want URL or to define a push action. Personally, I'm not good at remembering all of these options. But if you build this in the UI, you do get some help working through this, although you're still on the hook for knowing the appropriate field names for the second data section that houses the push and URL options. And for me, usability is one of those things I've tried to make a priority, and text-based notifications can get annoying. And since I don't want to have to remember all of the notification services, the options that are included in those services, or to check whether or not the input boolean for each person is on before sending a text message, I built some helper scripts to help simplify that for me. For example, if I wanted to text normal stuff like a heads up that the washing machine is finished, I can just call the text notify underscore Jeff script. And all I have to do is pass it a message. The script then checks to see if my text notification input boolean is on, and if so, it sends me the message. I've defined one of these scripts for my wife as well, but even that got too much, so I created one big text notify script, and I pass it three parameters. Who, which is the person that the text should be sent to. This could be Jeff, or it could be one of the group names like parents. Title is what I want to be shown on the notification pop-up that happens on the device, and then message. The script then takes the who, and with the choose action, checks to make sure that text notifications are allowed for that specific person. And if no one is supplied, the message goes to the all iOS group. For the majority of the text notifications, this is what I use. But in cases where I need to send an alert, I have a script that simplifies that as well. For alerts, I don't check to see if someone has disabled their text messages because it's an alert. But I do use the who to route it to the right person. But I didn't need the choose action here because I'm not checking to see that other things are true. So I just use an if else statement to translate the value of who to a notify service. And if I need to send an image, I use the text alert image script, which works the same as the one we just talked about, but I can supply a URL to an image using the URL parameter and the content via content type. And I don't have to remember the rest. Setting up a helper script like this does require more effort at the setup stage, but I do find it's easier because I don't have to remember as many of the parameters that I need to send for each of these services, and I don't have to worry about getting the YAML right for the more complicated options. So now that we have these helper scripts, we can simplify our automations. For example, in my tornado warning automation, I just make a service call to my text alert script. Since this goes to everyone, I don't bother with setting who. I just give a title and a message and that's it. On my lightning detected notification, I've been testing it and I don't need it to go to everyone. So I call the text notify script, set the who to Jeff, and then give it my notification. Once I'm happy with how this notification works, I'll change this to an alert and drop the who. And that's all I really wanted to cover in this first intro to simplifying text notifications. Hopefully it gave you some idea on how you could leverage these patterns in your own setup to simplify your automations and make it easier to avoid YAML issues and having to remember all of those parameters for the notification services. If this video left you with more questions than answers, or you want to talk through an idea you have on how you might be able to make this better or make it unique to your situation, let us know in the comments or jump into the Slacker Labs Discord there's a link in the description. If you want to help support Slacker Labs and the mission to help you automate the boring stuff, you can buy me a coffee or visit the official Slacker Labs t-shirt store, links in the description. Or just let me know that you found value in this video by hitting that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more smart home content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.